16 bit. So now all that's left to be done is just press record again and you can actually start recording. Now one thing I will talk to you about is mic position. We mentioned before that we don't have to worry about phase cancellation uh, because of the unique XY configuration of the stereo mics. But another thing that audio engineers think about when recording is mic proximity. Obviously, the closer you are to the sound source, the louder it will be. But also a couple of other things change as you get closer to a, a sound source. First is that relationship between the direct and reflected sound, it starts to change. I'm talking to you through a shotgun mic. It's just out of uh, range of the camera. It's probably about two and a half feet from my mouth. Let's switch over. Can we switch over to the other mic? That this is much further away. While it's a little quieter, but the main difference you can hear is that you can hear much more of the room that I'm recording in, the reflection off of the wall, off of the walls and the ceilings, the reverberation of the reverb uh, for sure. Let's, can we switch back to this guy? Uh, now, if there's one thing that makes an audio recording sound just cheap and nasty is the, that effect of hearing the room reflections. So, the best way to record if you want a more direct sound is to get in close. Now, another thing that changes as you get close is that the low end or the bass is more pronounced. For a natural sounding acoustic guitar performance, I'd place the H4N about two to four feet from the guitar. Move it a little further away to bring in the sound of the room. This might maybe sound a little nicer on a more sparse arrangement, maybe on a classical guitar. If you really want to cut down on the natural reflections coming off of your walls, you could invest ten dollars to $20,000 to have a soundproof booth uh, with a floating floor installed in your home, or, you know what, a walk-in closet works pretty well too. If you have a walk-in closet that is lined with soft clothes, uh, jackets and sweaters, it's really a perfect environment to get that dry, reflection-free uh, studio sound right in your own home. It's a really... Uh, it's a, it's a very valuable alternative. So that's basically all there is to recording from the built-in microphones right here. If you wish, you may want to record from an external mic or mics. I have a couple of mics that uh, I could use, a dynamic mic like this guy here, quite often uses a cable uh, that will go uh, from an XLR to a quarter inch phone uh, on the other. Simply connect that quarter inch jack into the first input and then we can record from it. Now, because this mic is dynamic, it actually needs nothing else except that connection straight to your H4M. A condenser mic like this one normally terminates into an XLR connector that thankfully our combo inputs on the H4N can handle, they can handle either one. But because this mic is a condenser, it needs power to operate and you guessed it, the H4N is up to the job with phantom power built uh, right in. Uh, let's record with both of these types of microphones. I've connected up my dynamic mic to the first input right here. I'll select that input on the front panel, hit record, and with all of this set up here, I can adjust the recording level on the right hand side while I'm checking the mic. Hey, check, check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, that looks about good right here. Now, you might have noticed that we're only getting level on the left hand side here. The H4N records in three different ways, either stereo, four channel, or multi-track. Right now, we're looking at stereo. That means that the resulting recording we make will be a stereo file, a 44.1K 16-bit stereo wave file. And this all makes sense when we're recording from the inbuilt stereo pair of mics. But what about when you want to record 
an interview with just a single handheld mic like this. Do you really want that stereo file that only has content on the left-hand side? I mean, try putting that up on your podcast. All of your subscribers will be shaking their headphones going, thinking one of their earbuds uh, isn't working. Well, you can always make that change in some kind of editing, uh, audio editing application, but there's a much slicker way uh, to fix this problem. Follow me. Menu.